there. And we're back. We're back here on the conversation couch, located in Scan and Champo's laundry room. Every time I come in here, I see something different. I've never noticed those chairs at the back before. Never seen this bike. It's uh, half a bike here. That's Champo, isn't it? <laughs> That's Champo's little bike in the box. Again, not going to be funny to anyone that isn't in the room. But, but welcome to everyone watching. I'm joined today by Dan... Freitas? Uh, Freitas, yeah. Freitas. I should have asked you how to pronounce it before, before we <laughs> it's start. Right. It's uh, Portuguese. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, okay. everyone, everyone struggles with it. It's, it's right. Fre Fre I can't really write. Right? Freitas. Yeah. Awesome. From the red team, from Real Madras. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's boiling in this room, but uh, no, great, thank you. We rocked up, uh, well I rocked up, and I thought, it's going to be warm in there today, shall we do it outside? But it's quite blowy out there. We did one out there over the summer and it was it worked fine, but I worried if tonight it wouldn't. So we'll we'll come in here and sweat it out instead. Yeah, a little Wendy will just treat us as a sauna. <laughs> yeah. Before that's actually a really good show. Before away day. Before weighing. Come and sit in the laundry room for a bit <laughs> and lose some extra pounds. But we're here, we're gonna talk about uh, you and your experiences in Manly Fat. Um, obviously we've talked a little bit about what we're going to talk about, but really what I want to know from you to begin with, it's not anything I've told you I'm going to ask you, it's a big question, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Sure. What's your favourite food? I've, uh, yeah, I've said this before, it changes. Um, I think the main <laughs> one I'd go for the staple would have to be steak and chips, but oh. I do love a uh, katsu curry. Oh, okay. Would but, you make that yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, get some packets from Tesco and you can... Make some just with some rice and chicken. It's really good. It sounds like steak good. and chips would be more for after weighing. Yeah, and exactly. Like we might fall just before. Yeah, yeah. Burn off, burn off some with the heat for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, talk to me now about uh, about about the program at Man vs Fat. What what brought you? What brought you here? What brought you to us? Well, uh, yeah. Um, I guess I should go into my sort of story because uh, it all sort of. Intertwined. Well, it's quite an interesting one, isn't it? Your your story. Yeah. So uh, tell the good people. <laughs> <laughs> well, my story begins with uh, I've always sort of lived and worked in London. Um, always quite a wide wide guy, and uh, I met my wife, who uh, at the time was of course my girlfriend, uh, it, over in Wales, and um, it we got to a point where it was right as the pandemic was starting i was at work and she messaged me saying boris has just said work from home you should work from home right now so straight away i grabbed everything that i had um and i came straight over to wales not knowing how long we were going to be here for really mad um or how long we were going to be locked down super mad and so uh, i had already been sort of starting to lose weight in the travels down i would do Oh. Uh, I would be walking from work to the coach station over there, taking a coach station every Friday, uh, taking a coach every Friday to Wales, and then walking from the coach station over here to uh, a place. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how I started losing weight. But then when I moved over here, uh, I, just as everything was opening back up after the pandemic, or uh, some sort of things started opening up, uh, I was thinking, oh, I really want to get into football. I really want to, I still want to lose more weight. I want to meet people, I don't know anyone here. And I came across Man vs. Fat on Facebook. Nice. Um, and straight away I went, this is the perfect thing for me. Yeah. yeah. Just signed up right away, and that was uh, sort of how the story went. Fantastic. So, talking about the, the move down, so you moved from London with a moment's notice. Yeah. Because yeah. Boris told you to get going. So, not, none of your possessions with you then, presumably, so just what you took to work that day. Exactly. Um, I had some clothes because I'd actually come from Wales that morning. And oh, right, wow. as, <laughs> oh, right, right as work ended, I got the first coach back out. So, that was a Monday, Wales. presumably? Yeah, yeah. It was you a, come back on the Monday morning and then back out again on the Monday? I believe, yeah, I believe it was on the, on the Monday, yeah. Without right. seeing, presumably, the flat that you lived in? No, yeah, I did, didn't, didn't see my family. I just went straight away. I went to go. <laughs> I was thinking it was only going to be a couple of weeks, and I thought, oh, just if we're going to be locked down, just right, be with her, rather there. than being locked down London. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, sure. perfect choice. Of, <laughs> wow. Made it up Have you been back since? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been back a few times now uh, since everything's been opening up, and uh, since my parents have been able to get the vaccine and everything, it's been nice being able to go back and see him. Yeah, then, but, yeah, great. 
but yeah, it was a long time of, of uh, being here, really, not being able to move. Crazy, crazy. So what? Um, you're you're fully based here now. Cause... Yeah, everything based here. Um, I was one of the I'd like to say lucky few over the the sort of lockdown where. I was in furlough with my work in London, mm -hmm. and I managed to get a job offer over here in Wales. Wow. Um, wow. So it was perfect timing, really. And as soon as everything started opening up, it would, rather than going back to the old office, I went to my new office over here. <laughs> so it was a set of really incredible, lucky circumstances. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There, if you hear a few stories like that, it's um, that's really, really good. So where, I mean, I, I've never looked at you and thought, God, the dance fat. You don't look fat. Where sort of have you got to in terms of your weight at your sort of at your peak? Was there was there a peak peak that you remember? Uh, yeah, I remember one time uh, weighing myself in a couple of years ago now, and I was 120 kilograms. Um, and I it it sort of blew me away because that's me at the moment. Yeah, it, it blew me away because at the time I always knew it was big, but I've never really put a number to it. Uh -huh. And so weighing myself in, it sort of really hit me all at once. And when's this? What? Uh, this would have been the when I lost remember weighing myself at that, that size. I think it must have been the beginning of twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was that was my peak. Really, is what I can what I think of as my peak at least. And um, where are you now? Right now, I just weighed in on Friday at eighty six. Awesome. <laughs> That's a so, huge loss in it's, that time. Yeah, it's a, it's a good amount. I'm really, I'm really happy about it. Um, I think the biggest thing for me wasn't the numbers so much as I remember being in triple XL shirts and everything, and starting to go shopping over here in Wales and being like, wait, I can fit in a medium. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Just yeah, blew me away. That's a lot of sizes to drop in one. Yeah, one yeah. Because I was still walking around in, in the triple XL clothes I had lying around from. Uh, Wow. Not even being able to move all my stuff over. That's just mad. everything I had was triple XL and uh, just jumping straight down to the medium. What's the goal for you? What's the the goal here? I think in terms of a goal, I don't think I've ever had really one set perfectly. But okay. I think BMI boss is one I like within it's the, good the program. Good isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen Alex and Ross having their yeah, they rock in, they rock it. For I'm sure. thinking, yeah, that's that's where I want to look towards. You can't be too far away from that. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think it might be somewhere around 29. I think I've still got another okay. four points to drop. Good. But in terms of how uh, weight, I'm not exactly sure where that is myself. Yeah. It differs to everybody. It's a difficult scale to navigate. But yeah. you, you look you look amazing. I'm sure you're feeling you very much, much better for it. Thank you. Talk to me about... Um, so this is all about the red team. And my man, we found on that night down here. Have you got... Like a moment, a favourite moment that sticks out since um, joining us? I think I've got a couple. I think the biggest one for me was uh, having the uh, award ceremony 11 aside. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that was brilliant, being able to actually bring my family down and um, them sort of seeing what we've been working on mm -hmm. every Friday. It's great. Being able to sort of have them there and show them all, this is us as a community, this is how, this is how we're playing together and everything. It was, it was a great moment and... Um, yeah, it was it was lovely having my, my wife and son there being able to see us and how old is your son? Uh, he's nine now. Nine? Yeah. Wow, you yeah. can have a game. Yeah, you can yeah, have a got game. The, <laughs> <laughs> your brain's how I'm in. Uh, is it are you playing Sunday? Yeah, yeah, I'm playing on Sunday. Is he so, coming as well? Yeah. We'll get on to the love the bouncy castle on the last one. So <laughs> oh, I've seen the bouncy castle for Sunday. Look, that's even game. bigger than the last one. Definitely getting him in there. I think that was my favourite moment since I joined Manby Fat as well and I joined back in 2018 but that that day was just is everything I thought and wanted Man V Fat to be and I think it's really special that we got to pull that off and also with you know with a full club as well with 80 guys it was just perfect for me yeah I thought it was a great game as well we ended up 5-5 uh, five, five, right? mm. the last grasp of the game I think it ended up being I was uh, you were on oh because we were on the same team weren't we yeah I yeah. didn't think we were going to come back from that I thought that was I thought we were cooked yeah we managed it right at the end uh, yeah I had to come off because I, I had a throw in right near the end I think lost five ten minutes into the game and uh, I had my ring on still I tried taking it off before the game but it was too tight <laughs> but with all the rain and the sweat I'd had a throw in and both and it rings off. just came off and pinged on the ground. It's a funny thing because I keep getting mentioned it, uh, mentioned to it by everyone now that 
I've had two matches now where I've thrown the ball out and my ring's flown off. <laughs> so now I've had to keep it around this my is, neck. So this is what inspired that? Exactly, that yeah, day, yeah. That moment. Yeah, so that was the final moment where I was like, all right, I can't have it on my hands anymore. It's, well, you don't want to lose it, it is. It's a special, yeah. special thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, another reason for really wanting to join and everything is uh, I've got my new one coming up uh, and she's due in the next month. She, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, due in the next month, so I can't wait. And I just want to be the best version of myself for my kids, just being able to, yeah. you know, be there for them, yeah. be everything I can be for them, really. Massive. Massive. Uh, final question for sure. me, because um, I already know who supports Chelsea. Am I right in thinking that? Arsenal. Oh, oh, sorry. Who supports Chelsea? Uh, it's John on our team that supports Chelsea. John. Does he? Yeah. Does he? yeah. I didn't know that. Mikey does. I'm thinking of Mikey, but there, there's a connection there, isn't there? So, okay. Arsenal. Well, that's awesome. all good. Yeah, it's a sad one to talk about. It's uh, depressing every time. But you yeah. say that I support Bristol Rovers. So you're, oh, okay. yeah, you're it doing it. Worse. It could be worse. It could be worse. <laughs> could is that your local team then? Oh, it was, yeah, yeah. That's was super rare. You need someone that supports a good team that's actually from. Yeah, it was just a 20 minute walk away from the stadium. Wow. I couldn't go to many games because they're the most expensive in the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I could, it was uh, just a good 20 minute walk. I always remember an Argyle 442 did, and it was the most expensive ticket in the Football League versus the cheapest. Hmm. And the most expensive was Chelsea, and the least expensive was Bristol Rovers. And it was the year that we drew them in the League Cup. Oh wow! And got got twatted like three two. Well, it was three two, but it was one of those like absolute twonkins. You know, At least it was cheap. <laughs> well, there was a the Stafford Bridge. So, oh, wow. <laughs> you're uh, if you're talking to someone who's not quite sure about joining the program, they oh, no, 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 I don't know what to do. What does Dan say to them? Uh, I think it's something that a lot of people say, really, um, but it's. Just do it. It's. Yeah, I know it might sound quite bland, but really, um, taking that plunge is the biggest step. It's realizing you know you want to do something about it. How can you do it? And I think joining the program is a big one. Um, you stay. Uh, it, it sort of makes you stay on target. It keeps you focused. Every week you've got that way in. You've got that support line from the coaches. Um, you make friends. You've got your teammates. Uh, I think just making the plunge is the biggest thing, and uh, just doing it. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, see you on Friday. Cheers. See you on Friday.